So my background wasn't an IT background. In fact, I was, uh, I joined the Marine Corps in 1993 after growing up in somewhat of a broken home situation. Uh, both my parents were high school dropouts and uh, there was some drug abuse and some other things going on in the household. And in fact, we were homeless at one point. Uh, I was staying with grandparents and my, you know, my siblings were spread all over the place. And I, I just knew that I needed to get out of there, get out of that situation. And so I joined the Marine Corps. Uh, I figured the Marine Corps would give me the, the skills that I need and give me the structure that I needed. And quite frankly, uh, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I ended up spending 21 years in the Marine Corps. So definitely was a really good decision for me. And so I ended up moving on from that. And so what I did was I went into business for myself, but not by myself. And so I found a financial firm. I, I was always interested in investments and I had always been able to uh, talk about that because again, we grew up not having anything and I knew that my only way out of that was to uh, make some money. So um, basically I, I decided to become a financial advisor and I started working with another, with a firm who uh, gave me an office and gave me an assistant and I was out knocking on doors uh, trying to meet people to get them to do business with me. And I did pretty well at that. I built the business up to about, uh, where I was managing about $35 million. And uh, that, that number seems big, but it's not as much as you might think when it comes to compensation. The thing that always bothered me though, is I would sit down with my clients and I would have clients that I, I know I had at least the talents that they had. I know I had the skills that they had. I know that I was, um, I hate to say it, but, but you know, a better person uh, uh, figuratively and morally. And yet they were making twice or three times what I was making, but they were coming to me for financial advice. And that really bothered me. Uh, didn't have anything against them, but I just knew that I, I wanted more for myself. And so um, when COVID kicked off in 20, the beginning of 2020, 2020 that gave me an opportunity to, uh, to really exit, uh, exit stage left on that firm. And I actually went out on my own doing that business um, at kind of as a side hustle. And I started picking up books to see what I could do as far as uh, IT goes. I noticed that most of the folks that I talked to had a, um, you know, had a background in IT, the ones that were highly compensated and really enjoyed their job. And I couldn't see myself working in a, um, you know, what I thought the IT guy did was, uh, you know, he was in the service center, um, server center, I should say, uh, running around and, and connecting, uh, you know, this cable to that cable and, and troubleshooting and, and taking people's calls and helping them op open up Microsoft Word. Um, I, I just didn't see myself doing that. I wanted something that was well beyond that with a deeper understanding of it. Um, and then as I started getting up on the forums, I started learning about this program called uh, Vet Tech. And Vet Tech is a program uh, through the Department of Veterans Affairs that um, that as long as you have a, it, believe it or not, as long as you have a dollar left in your GI Bill entitlement, if you apply for Vet Tech, Vet Tech will pay for uh, you to upskill, uh, especially in, in those tech skills, and uh, also pay you a housing allowance while you do it. And so the timing for me was perfect. And so uh, I got scrolling through Vet Tech and I looked through the list of providers and there was an intellectual point. And Intellectual Point, what was really neat about it is um, the website. I, I clicked through the website. I checked out a couple other ones as well. And one wanted me to come out to California and spend six weeks out there. I think in Malibu, which wouldn't have been too bad, but I'm a you know dad, got four kids at home. Uh, I've got to put food on the table. So um, that wasn't an option. And so I kind of looked through all the different options that were out there. And uh, I just, I stumbled upon Intellectual Point. And when I went to Intellectual Point's website, on the front page there, there was a, a tab just for me. It said veterans. Uh, and so I clicked through to the veteran side and I, um, I kind of went through the different programs and I ended up deciding on DevOps, which was uh, Security Plus to start with, and then Certified Ethical Hacker, and then finally Splunk at the end of that. Uh, that went on for about three months. I did that one, uh, you know, every weekend, uh, working probably from, uh, I think it was nine to about six o'clock each day. And then as the course went on, uh, we did more of the labs later on in it. So if you understood the, con the, the context of it, you could back away from it earlier. Um, but the point is we got through a, a lot of material with some masterful instruction. I really felt like uh, I could speak intelligently to anyone in the field about what I know. 
And so um, ended up going through the courses about, the, about uh, halfway through the second course, which was Certified Ethical Hacker. Uh, intellectual Point actually uh, delivered me a resume and said, hey, here's your resume that we came up with for you. Uh, start applying for jobs with this. And so I did, I, on a leap of faith, I put it out there. I still didn't feel like I knew everything that existed um, on that piece of paper, but, uh, but, I, but I trusted the process. Uh, as Prim will tell you when you start the course, I trust the process and I just went with it. I trusted the process. So put my resume out there. I had a couple minor uh, hits um, for, for interviews. Some of them weren't really positions that I would want to, uh, that, that I would leave my current uh, position for and uh, you know fully leave my current position for and move the whole family. And then we just, we went on vacation and I get a phone call from a recruiter from the company that I'm working for now um, called me out of the blue and said, hey, we took a look at your resume and um, we think you're the person. So uh, let's do an interview. And so they did an informational interview with the recruiter at first. And I think what really helped me was the terminologies. I knew port numbers. I knew uh, the different terminology uh, to at least sound like, you know, you know, the whole fake it till you make it analogy. I hate to say that, but but some of the, uh, the, the ports and throwing out how, um, how a, a, a three-way handshake works, et cetera, um, that really solidified the fact that I might know a little bit about what I'm talking about. And that got me the second interview. And so I go into the second interview and that was a video interview. And I was uh, stressed, really stressed before. I, I was you know, wondering what they might ask me. And so I reached out to John Lehman at uh, Intellectual Point and uh, I'm in a group with him on LinkedIn and we've been following one another and I've been getting a lot of uh, coaching from him. But essentially, uh, he told me what to study. And so I went back and I, and I studied those things and when I got to the interview, they didn't ask me any of them uh, because I was quick to, um, in my elevator speech at the beginning, I was quick to tell them what I knew, which it's something to, to, that you should know, you should throw out there your strengths. Uh, two days later, I get an offer letter in the mail. And in fact, um, so I, I think I told you my, you know, the highest income I made as a financial advisor was about $88,000. And my pay range for this particular position was between 92 and 102 working remotely. And so uh, I went back on that and I accepted their offer. And, uh, and I start this Tuesday on the, uh, on the 18th of uh, January. So I'm really looking forward to that. And the other thing is I don't have to quit my other job. I can continue to, on the side, uh, work with the clients that I really enjoy working with. And uh, I don't have to upset my family with these $900 paychecks anymore. So um, anyhow, I, I, I highly encourage you to take a look at it. Again, I'm a guy who came from a uh, pretty poor background. I was a kind of a trigger puller in the Marine Corps. Uh, didn't really have an, a lot of tech skills on that side. Uh, did a lot of really cool stuff in the Marine Corps, but now I'm going to be able to provide for my family uh, in the way that I think they deserve to be provided for. And the other thing is, what I didn't mention this, I'm 47 years old and I'm just getting started in, uh, in IT and cybersecurity. And so, um, you know, my intent would be to, as I'm making more money and I'm saving more, this is a career that you could essentially retire from at an early age or semi-retire, I should say, and, uh, and, and do it remotely and still get paid. And so my goal would be to be sitting on a beach somewhere um, in the afternoon and doing my cybersecurity uh, business in the morning. And you can certainly do that in this, in this uh, field. So uh, please uh, do yourself a favor and uh, you know, dig deep and, and you know, decide what's most important to you. Uh, this isn't rocket science. You don't have to be a genius to figure this out. I'm certainly not, um, but you can do it. So just take my advice and uh, hopefully uh, all will work out for you. Uh, I hope to see you out there somewhere.